Hi and welcome to my channel on DIY Music Electronics. In this video we're going to have a look at the True Bypass Effect Loop pedal, what it is and how you can build it. Simply put, this pedal allows you to either send a signal through an effect loop or bypass it. In the loop you could add any number of effects you like and shut them all off by the push of one button. The schematic looks like this. The signal from the input jack is connected via a switch to the send jack, which can alternatively be switched to ground. The output jack is either switched to the return jack or to the input. The signal either flows through the effect loop or bypasses it, hence the name. True Bypass Effect Loop Pedal. So, how do we turn this schematic into a real life pedal? We'll have to understand how switches work, not just how to flick them. Let's have a closer look. Depending on the position of the lever, the middle terminal, the so called common terminal, is either connected to the upper or lower terminal. We can thus choose what path our electrical signal will take. This switch is called a single pole double throw or SPDT switch. But if we take another look at our schematic we can see that we need to throw two switches at the same time. This is where the double pole double throw or DPDT switch comes into play. It works just like two single pole switches next to each other. Either the upper terminals are connected to the middle common terminal or the lower terminals are connected to the common terminal. Note that there are no connections left to right. These are two separate switches that are just flicked at the same time. This is the foot switch we'll actually use. It works just like the other two only instead of a lever it has a push button. Each push changes if the top or bottom terminals are connected to the common. The other change is that we now have three poles instead of two. That's why this is called a 3PDT three poles double throw switch. For the moment we'll ignore the third pole but trust me it'll be illuminating. Now that we understand the switch at the heart of the pedal, how do we physically build it? Let's start off with the enclosure. You can use any old box you like, but I'd suggest an aluminum die cast enclosure. They're easy to work with, come in lots of shapes and sizes, are readily available, sturdy and add shielding. The first thing we'll need to do is drill holes to mount our mechanical components. I'll place one on the faceplate for the switch, two on top for the send and return jacks, one each left and right for the input and output jacks. You could place the holes any other place you like. There'd be nothing wrong with that, just plenty wrong with you. But do make sure to leave enough space to physically mount the components. The enclosure can be labelled in any fashion you like. I'll just use a sharpie. Right, that's the enclosure done, but how do we wire it all up? Let's start with the output. It's switched between the return and the initial input signal. So we'll solder a lead from the output jack to the right common terminal of the foot switch. We'll connect the return to the lower terminal by soldering a wire to the return jack. Likewise the input to the upper terminal. And that's the return circuit done. We're halfway. We'll connect the send to the common terminal and switch it between the input on the lower terminal and ground on the upper terminal. Now when the send jack is connected to ground it makes sure that the loop doesn't pick up any stray signals. 
a nice extra feature to have. One last thing to do, adding ground leads, not only to the switch, but also running them between all jacks. We're done. Hurrah! <coughs> now, this might still seem a bit confusing. Let's have another look how the signal flows through the wires. When the lower terminals are activated, the signal passes through the effect loop. It flows from the input jack to the lower left terminal, to the common terminal, and out to the send jack. After returning from the effects, it comes in through the return jack and is sent to the lower terminal on the right, which is now connected to the output via the common terminal. When the switch is set to the upper terminals, the sand jack on the left common terminal is connected to ground. The loop is truly being bypassed, hence the name True Bypass Effect Loop Pedal. The input signal is sent on to the upper terminal on the right, which is now switched to its common terminal, from where it flows to the output. Got it! Awesome. Now, let's see how she sounds. Hey, I've got to plug it in. Matey forgot to plug it in. Oh, Christ. You can add any number of effects in the loop between send and return, or none at all. If you put none in, you can just use it as a mute button. If you connect the send jack to one amplifier and the output to another amp, you can switch between the two. Or if you connect two different instruments between the input and the return jack, you, you can, can switch, switch between the two. But the most useful application is when you use it to switch a whole combination of effects on and off at the same time. If you want to build this pedal for yourself, I've put a link to the schematic, a layout diagram and bill of materials in the description below. It should cost you about $15 in parts and is an awesome a really useful beginner's project. Next time we'll work out how to add a signal lamp so you can tell if your pedal is on or off. If you don't want to miss that and other videos to come, do hit the subscribe button. If you'd like me to build another specific pedal, do write it in the comments below.